strong spirit. You must develop a strong spirit. Are we together? You must develop a strong spirit if you are going to fulfill your destiny. If you are going to see God's power, God's wisdom, God's creativity, and God's, God's prosperity in your life, you must develop a strong spirit. Because there is a spirit realm to every aspect of life. Is that true? So you must develop a what? A strong spirit. God has a deposit in all spheres of creation. And for you to be able to see into that, you must develop a strong spirit. A lot of believers are born again, but their spirit is not strong enough to really partake of some spiritual things. At that level, you can see some things. You can fellowship with some things. You can know some things. In fact, some people, when they gave their life to Christ, right, their experience in the spirit realm is more better than now. When they gave their life to Christ, they were hearing, in, they were hearing, they were hearing God, they were happy, bubbling in the joy of the spirit, having fellowship with believers. They were not having any envy in their heart, nothing like that. They were just walking with God. Everything was fun and everything was nice. The Holy Spirit would tell them before things, show them things before they happen. And they are just living their life all of a sudden as they enter Christendom. Yes. And they left being conscious of the kingdom using their spiritual senses. Right? They began to go into, okay, okay, that's how things are done in church. That's how you pray. That's how you study the Bible. That's how you do it. Stay like this. Stay in this place. Put like this. Sit down here. Don't shift. Don't do like this. Don't do like this. Say after me. My father, my father. My maker, my maker. So, and then they learned all kinds of things. All of a sudden, their spirit began to shut down. Their soul and their body began to take the lead. And every time you hear them always say, oh, good times, oh, good old days. Why should you be looking at the past? In the spirit, you should be the, the, the. Our father in Lord yesterday said, faith is an adventure. In the spirit, it's an adventure, it's adventurous. So why is it not an adventure? And some people's spirit has become down, just, just heavy. So how do you build a strong spirit? I'll give you just four, three keys. I think I still have time. And then I'll be done. Hebrews, okay, let's read Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, quickly. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. Okay, 14. It says, but strong meats, that solid spiritual food, belong to them that are full of age, mature. Even those who, have, who by reason of use or practice have their senses. Now, this includes spiritual, your spiritual, your, 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 your soul and everything, but let's look at the spiritual. There are senses trained, exercised to discern both good and evil, right? So how do we develop our spirit senses? Number one, quickly. We, we know this one, but the way we know it, right, has even affected us. Number one, praying in the spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit is not an end. It's a means to an end. A lot of people just sit down and just pray in tongues. Well, I've seen people who pray in tongues. Pray. There was a particular brother years back who used to, I mean, if he start praying in tongues, yeah, it's like a machine. He will hold this place like this. There's a way he used to stand. He will speak in tongues for like five, six hours. He will maintain the posture. As wonderful as that is, right? I was like, wow, this guy can pray. We used to pray. So, somebody said, let's pray. At any time they say, let's pray with him, I don't used to feel like praying with him. I don't know why. So, I just, let's pray alone. So, there was a particular day he went somewhere to pray. He prayed to a point where the fire was too much. He removed the shed. The fire was too much. He removed his trousers. The fire was too much. He removed his singlet. He was about to remove everything and everything held him. I said, this is a public place. What are you doing? He said, there's fire inside the spirit. And before you know, he started doing weird things and the rest of them. Now, listen, praying in tongues is not bad. But the issue is a lot of people don't just think that praying in tongues is that's all. No, that's not all. Praying in the spirit is wonderful. And is, in fact, let me say something. If you are praying in tongues and you are having unforgiveness in your heart, right? And you pray that long for, for a long time. Can I tell you something? You'll become a witch. Yes. Because what is in your heart will start, start gaining volume in the spiritual. 
So you see some people, they pray in the spirit, pray, but they're having envy and magic. The thing will just generate another thing. Another spirit will ride on the strength that your praying in tongues is producing and cause havoc. That's why a lot of believers, you know, have projections here and there. A believer praying in tongues, but something is in the heart. What will he do? He's, see, he's, spiritual, he's producing spiritual energy, so things will shoot out what has dwelt, what has stayed, has been ingrained in his heart. Are you getting what I'm saying? So praying in tongues is important, but it's not the end. As you speak in tongues, the Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongues, speaketh unto God, right? He speaks mysteries. Men can hear him, but in the spirit he's speaking mysteries. Now that you have spoken mysteries, download it now. Now that you have uttered mysteries, download it. So, why are you praying in tongues? Is it not to have fellowship with God? Now, as you are praying in tongues, your spirit is energized. Your spirit is charged. That's why I find that some people after praying in tongues, because they did not use that spiritual energy, then they just start using it, they become proud. Say, so have you ever prayed for 10 hours before? You have not prayed for 10 hours, you have not started your Christian life. Well, have you, what have you been doing all these years? Have you been a believer or an unbeliever? I don't understand. So what has happened? The praying in tongues, the power in it, I mean, generated in the spirit, is not being used. So now your soul, what has been hanging in your soul has taken it up. Because your soul too is spiritual. In fact, it was not meant to exist without the spirit. That's why if you have sorrow in your heart, it will affect your spirit. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a what? Broken spirit dries the bone. He says sorrow in the heart does what? He says he make it. Ah, there are a lot of scriptures about that too. Look at this, Isaiah 17, I mean, Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bone. Proverbs 15, 13, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but a, by sorrow of the heart, he says the spirit is broken. So, there is the way your soul affects your spirit trust into the things of God. So, if there is sorrow, that's why you should be rejoicing in the Lord all the time. You should be, when you join the Lord, the Holy Spirit one told me, he says rejoicing, shouting, jumping, and singing in the Spirit, done in the Holy Spirit, is one of the ways you strengthen your spirit, man. So I just sit down, by the time I speak in tongues, meditate on God's so I begin to laugh, and jump, and sing in the Spirit. All of a sudden, you are energized. Why are you going up and down in sorrow every time you are shouting pain? The mystery of pain, the mystery of pain. There is pain. Leave pain alone. Why not enter into the joy of the Lord? What are you doing with pain all the time? What are you doing with pain all the time? Say pain will make you great. Great where? Have you seen all those great men in pain? Even though there are issues around, they rejoice, they just continue. These are unbelievers. They will tell you don't be soiled by your... By things happening around you, keep a positive heart, keep a positive mind so that you can succeed. A believer who has Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God is not meat and bread. It's immaterial. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So why are you not rejoicing? So if there is sorrow, you are out of the kingdom. Amen? Are we together? Why, did he, why, was, why was the children of Israel not able to enter into Canaan land. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 78, verse 8, it says, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, whose spirit was not steadfast with God. How did we know that? The Bible says they were complaining and murmuring. So murmuring and complaining made their spirit not steady. There are things that affect your human spirit, and you should, you should deal with that. So, when you pray in the spirit, you generate spiritual energy. When those, and that energy is generated, your spirit becomes more sensitive and aware to God's spirit. Then you should begin to ask questions. You should begin to receive answers. At that time, have you observed? Maybe, maybe personally, if you are praying about, to God about a matter and you pray in the spirit for a while, all of a sudden, what is in your heart will start coming out. And then answers will begin to come. So you should be sensitive enough. That's praying in tongues. Praying in tongues will increase, energize your spirit to be sensitive to what God is saying, to what God is doing. So sensitivity to what God is saying, to what God is doing is the end. 
The praying in tongues is not the aim. Number two. Number two, quickly. Number two, meditating on God's word. Meditating on God's word. Meditating is not, meditation is not just about, it's not, it's not, it's not just thinking about the thing. It involves using the revelations of God's word or the revelation, yeah, the revelations of God's word as a doorway into fellowship and interaction with the spirit, with the spirit of God in God's dimensions and realms. So you meditate. Like I quoted a fire in Lord, he says you meditate under an influence. So when you pray in tongues, you have generated that fire and you begin to meditate. You meditate under that influence. As you meditate, spiritual things sit inside of you. Through, through meditation, listen, spiritual, spiritual realities um, are constructed in our soul. Spiritual realities are built into our soul. So they, they no longer just exist in your spirit, they now enter your soul. By meditating on God's word, you baptize your soul with the realities of God that your spirit is in contact with. So that your soul follows along. And then your body also comes along. And everything begins to arrange like that. Learn how to meditate. Simple way. Put the word of God in your, in your mind. Be meditating on God's word, but your heart wants to have fellowship. That's the problem with a lot of people who meditate. They think it's about a posture. No, meditation is not about a posture. It's about a person. You can walk and speak in tongues while you are meditating. You can keep quiet while you are meditating. You can even sing while you're meditating. In Hebrew, meditation is, means three things. It means muttering. It means, number one, it means pondering. It means muttering. It even means roaring. So a time comes in meditation where you begin to shout out the word. Are we together? So let's not spend much time there. Maybe another time. Number three, building Holy Spirit consciousness. What do I mean by that? But number one, by fellowshipping and obeying spiritual principles. How do you build Holy Spirit consciousness? By what? Following and obeying spiritual principles revealed in God's word. Anybody who tells you to ignore his word, right, is not prophetic. He is inspired by the devil. In Spirit Life book, I find the Lord said you can't go find the Holy Spirit in the spirit realm and the Holy Spirit will not correct your wrong perceptions using the revelation of God's word. Somebody once said the word of God is obsolete. I say, shut up your mouth. The Bible can't be. Where are they found now? They're almost getting mad. The Bible can't be obsolete. No. So how do you develop consciousness sensitivity in the God's word? A lot of people don't check the word of God to see what God has said about things. They want to hear God further. That's why you are not seeing visions. That's why you are not hearing further because you have not, you have not paid attention to what has been written. If you pay attention to what has been written, you will, you will hear what is revealed. You will hear what the Holy Spirit is revealing. A lot of people don't know how God's words sound because they have not been fine-tuning their spiritual ears with studying and reading the scriptures. So study to show yourself approved. Not just to preach. And not just to teach another person. But for your own self, for your own life. Before you became any apostle or prophet, like maybe you, you became a preacher like me, who preached to, every, to people almost every day. You are first a believer. So enjoy your life with God. Have fun. Right? Number two. Fellowshipping with other believers. Let's say you are building the spirit and you are missing fellowships. Today you are around, tomorrow you are not around. Some people they are around for special programs and they are absent for weekly meetings. What's that? That's carnality. <laughs> Very carnal. What are you doing? You will now come and be vibrating for us. <laughs> and be shouting. Everybody will hear your voice. Hey, bah, 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 hey. <laughs> By the time you are done with the game, after the next meeting again, the next program, you just show up. Hey, hey, hey. And you want to preach. You want to, you want to lead something. You want to lead prayer. You want to do this. You want to go and get involved. You want to walk by force. 
you have been missing fellowship. Very important, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some. Some people, so you don't follow their example. You come together with believers. You listen to the word of God. You are refreshed. You are being built. You see yourself. When that sister enters, you start envying. You watch her, you watch it. If you stay alone, you will not know. And God does not reveal those things to condemn you. He reveals those things so that you can bring them out. So how would they go out? When you are not fellowshipping with anybody, cheap with people. That's when you will know. Say, I'm very quiet. Until you fellowship with people, that's when we know. I'm very loving. Until you fellowship with people, that's when we will know. So you have fellowship with other believers. Is that true? You know that that alone is building your spirit. Some people don't know. Not only that, number three, under this point, you obey promptly the leadings of the spirit. You send something in your spirit, man, and it's in line with God's word, go ahead. You perceive something in your spirit, it's in line with God's word, go ahead. By doing that, you are strengthening your spirit. The last point, because of our time, walking in love. Walking in love. If you walk in love, you will build your spirit. You'll be building your spirit. What did the Bible say? The Bible says the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Now, that love has been shared in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Somebody offend you. What will you do? Pull that love out. You may be feeling hot, but tell yourself, no, the love of God is in my heart. Yes, I have unfeigned love towards this brother. I have unfeigned love towards this sister. The love of God overflows my heart. Overflows my heart. You walk in love. You forgive one another. You tolerate one another. Are we together? When you do these things by the help of God's spirit, your spirit man is building up. The Bible says those who walk in love, they can design all things. You'll be able to design things accurately. And your walk in the spirit will be awesome. Listen, don't be giving reasons why you shouldn't obey scriptural principles. Uh, this person offended me very well. That's why I shouldn't keep obey the word of God that says this. Forgive. One time someone came and met me and said, God, I saw this thing this person did to me is very painful. I forgive, but I will not forget. I say, you have not forgiven. I say, why don't you want to forget? I say, it's hard. I say, well, first, start with forgiving first. Abi? Gradually, gradually, you forget. So that when you, for, when you see the person, instead of you thinking something bad, right, you think something good. When something bad is coming to your heart, you pray for the person. If you cannot bless another person, you claim you are forgiving, you are not truly forgiving them. You should be able to bless them. You should be able to pray for them. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Come on, lift up your hands, bless the Lord. We give you praise. Blessed be your name forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Maybe we can, we can just stand. Stand in our feet. And just bless the Lord. Thank Him. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Blessed be your name forever. Come on, thank the Lord. Pray in the Spirit. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your spirit is not built. You won't go far in the realm of the spirit. And you, and you won't discover, you won't be able to discover the deep wisdom of God for your life and for your calling. Come on, pray in the spirit. I can't hear people. Thank you, Lord. Kera diga bashata, mata kasuga diga da bashata, krida baka basuga da bara bara bashata. Thank you, Father. Mata kata bashata, mandi gada baka basuga da bara da basha, koro do gobo gobo suga da bara da bara da da. Come on, pray in the spirit. Mata kasuga da la da bara da 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 da. Rata kabashata la gada basha, mada kabasu kata kata la da basha, mata kata kabasu kata la da basha. Come on, pray in the spirit. I can hear your voices.
now. We give you thanks. We bless your name. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I want to know maybe while we're praying, you felt healed, you got healed. I want you to wave your hand. Because I sense that people were getting healed. Okay, I just saw one hand at the back. I just saw another one here. Come on. Wave your hand. You got healed. One. Yes, two. Wow. Come on, wave your hand. Let me see you. One person, second person. It will be very interesting if we can know what you got healed from. Yes, please. Just come. Thank you, Lord. Okay, sir. It was a migraine headache. I woke up this morning, I was, I, during the worship, I was so weak, I was just sitting down, but right now I just feel blessed. Ah. Come on, give a shout to the Lord. Yes, this person, where's that person? I saw someone waved, okay, yes. Come on. Give a shout to the Lord. Yes, anyone got healed? Want to share? All right. Father, we thank you. Come on, lift up your hands. Bless the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord for his love and yours. We give thanks to the Lord for his love and yours. We give thanks the Lord, His mercies and yours forever. Forever. Oh, forever. Oh, forever.
of their spirit life. A reactivation, a re-triggering, a re-steering of your spirit life. I want you, I think you should come to the front and just receive some prayer right now to re-trigger your spirit realm walk, your spirit life vitality and powerful activity. Alright, if, if you are such a person, just step to the front right now while we continue a moment of worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. now, the, the, the Spirit of God told me that a lot of people are going to be activated to walk in the spirit realm raw in a very strong dimension. Amen. Where not just, they are not just going to know things before they happen, but they are going to live with, this, with, the, with, the, with the civilizations and technologies of the spirit realm. Yes. They are going to switch into another dimension of oppression in their businesses in everything they do even right now i just saw someone you, you, you usually forget things and anytime things are escaping your mind you feel a kind of headache at the back of your head so you're standing here like something touched that part of your head and then all of a sudden you just forget things easily and you can't remember but right now you are being you are being, how do I believe, you are being restructured, touching your head, and it looks like everything is rearranging back again. Amen. So, as we pray and as we, uh, as, as hands are laid on you, you are going to be activated again into functioning in the spirit. For yes. some, you begin to sense things in the spirit, feel things in the spirit again, and from henceforth, nurture them and walk in them. Father, we thank you for what you are already doing right now. Thank you for your power that is at work in this place. Thank you right now because ears are open. Yeah. Eyes are open. Yeah. Perceptions are open. Yeah. Sensations are open. 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the spirit to walk in the spirit we declare right now that you have been stirred up you have been energized in the spirit to walk with the Holy Ghost in Jesus mighty name come on make sure your heart is open receive as hands are laid on you for many other people. Wow. Wrong atmospheres have been broken in Jesus' name. Amen. They are broken in Jesus' name. Amen.
See, the spirit life is the, is, is the life of Jesus moving and flowing through you. When there is spirit life, you don't just talk the words of Jesus. You don't just talk like Jesus. You say what Jesus is saying. You don't just look like Jesus. You carry his looks. Look like his resemblance. Carrying his look is being, being him. You don't just walk like Jesus. His very steps are being taken through you. Spirit life is the actual core and foundation of true alignment in the spirit. That's when his kingdom comes and his will is done on earth. As it is in heaven you don't just touch like Jesus touched you bring the touch of Jesus with your touch so it's all over the scripture it's spirit life Romans 8 Galatians 5 it's the key 2 Corinthians 3 Able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Amen. That the righteousness of the Lord is fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but walk after. So if you want to see fulfillment of the word of God, of the law, of the prophet, all the things they said from Old Testament times to New, that they are hoping to be fulfilled, usually happens through. The people walking in spirit life. Sometimes people say there's delay in prophecy, delay in this. Is a is a gap of spirit life. Hallelujah. You can have prophetic gift, but if you don't have spirit life, your prophetic and then different things start to get in there. The foundation for true prophetic, real prophetic ministry that is sustained is the foundation of learning to live spirit life. Then your prophetic gifts can now prosper and advance prophetic ministry can advance without spirit life in your prophetic or whatever ministry you don't make shifts and transitions accurately so you start to employ gimmicks amen start to employ manipulations and politics and stuff like the sons of the prophets when they didn't shift and transition from Gilgal to Bethel to, Je to Jericho when Elisha and Elijah reached Jordan they say, let's go and look for his body. Because they couldn't see what, what went on. They don't know how to track. But they were sons of prophets. Amen. Because there was no spirit life journey. They couldn't tell who the next phase. They prophesied, but couldn't enter fulfillment of prophecy. May that not be your portion. You don't want to be the one prophesying and not entering to. Spirit life doesn't just make you prophesy. And doesn't just make you fulfill, it also makes you fulfill prophecy. Then it goes for that to make you the prophecy being fulfilled. You don't just have the word, you become the word. Made flesh, moving around. Manifested. Hallelujah. And the thing about spirit life is that whether you are a new believer, an old believer, you can 
get in there and get, understand walking spiritual things, even if you are a new. Walk in those things like far, even if you are new. It just requires that submission, that childlike heart, that willingness to yield to the Holy Spirit. The spirit life ebook that he was talking about, I think maybe we'll make it. I was in Enugu last, uh, Okigwe last week. They were, they were, people were getting the book shocked for the first time. People read the book and say they get financial breakthrough. Then I went back and asked God, like, we didn't write about finance now. What we wrote was spirit life. Then the Holy Spirit is showing me things are released from the Father, received through the Son, but received and taken and given in the Spirit. That a lot of things that He has given in the Spirit are hanging in the Spirit. So the people prayed and he supplied through Jesus Christ. The Father has supplied. But they are received in the Holy Ghost. But because they were not in the Holy Ghost, the things that God supplied through Christ were hanging there. But immediately they read spirit life and they, they say it helped their spirit life walk. Helped their walk in spirit. Those things that were hanging dropped. All the breakthroughs that were hanging just dropped. One lady needed to pay her master's school fees. She had no money and she had no job. She went to a place applied, they just, the Holy Spirit now started, she read the Spirit Life book and was just, you know, meditating, the Holy Spirit, somebody got her attention, like, go and read that book. That's what happened. You need to read this book now. And she started reading it and reading and started adjusting and adjusting and adjusting and adjusting and the Holy Spirit just told her, go to this place. And she went and they said, well, yeah, we're not really employing, we just take your, this thing, your whatever, your CV, that's all. <laughs> when she was there, somebody met her there, you, you do this, and gave her his card. You see, that school fees, out of the blues, that person that never showed up paid, another person paid, a third school fees came from where she served, and was, they so persecuted that she didn't receive salary. For some reason, they decided to compensate her, so they paid her masters, and so she had three payments times three of that master's school fees she didn't have. With her spirit life <laughs> that she was dealing in. Dramatic things always, when people talk about dramatic things, they break into the supernatural. I think there are some testimonies here, if we can display, that people talk about. So, as in, like, it's a real key in the spirit. Many people always say, oh, how the Babs always preach all these spooky messages, we don't really understand. Well, but people now said immediately they read Spirit Life ebook that they start understanding all the spooky messages. You know why? Because the, the messages came from that spirit realm. Once they get into that spirit realm, they are, they are now where the messages came from. It's their environment. It's easier for them. They now get it. They are flowing in it. Lift your hands. Pray for a moment. God wants you moving in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things that are hanging in there. Many, many things. That God is looking for people to bring down, to pull down. This, this prayer release is to steer you back into spirit life, into spirit realm living, spirit realm walking, spirit realm ministry. It's not until you have the dramatic, it doesn't always start with the dramatic encounter of like you are taken out of your body, you are seeing angels. It doesn't start, it starts with the promptings and the word, the obedience in the spirit, the promptings and the word. And then after some time, when they see that you've been faithful, 
and you are determined to be consistent, they now start releasing heavy things. The kind of things you won't even expect beyond your imagination. That's, that's how it happens. Hallelujah. I grew up around people, I mean like as a teenager in ministry, I had a lot of people that were seeing visions all the time, they were prophet. But the thing didn't go, me I was not seeing visions like them. But God kept drilling, walking, that's what, when you hit, hit it for a while, you keep going, major things start to happen. Why? Because that's how God designed the New Testament. That's how God designed the New Testament. All the glory, that's why you say the, the the, the glory that faded away and the glory that remained. When the heart will turn to the Lord, the veil will be removed. We behold the glory of God as in the dark. What we are talking about, like in spirit life, Second Corinthians 3. That it is God who has able, made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killer and spirit again. And if the glory of the ministration of the Old Testament was so much glorious that they could not look at the face of Moses, the minister of the Old Testament. How much more glorious will be the glory of the New Testament, the ministration of life? So they are talking about ministry and about the glory of the Testament and about the minister carrying that glory. That of the Old Testament was a ministration of the letter that killed it, even though, and it was so glorious that they can't look on Moses' face. But that if that one was that glorious, how much more will this one be glorious. So what they are talking about is the glory of the testament and the minister of it and the ministration of it. And they said that of the former is letter. But that one of this one is of what? The spirit. So if you are a spirit life, you will minister the glory of the New Testament. But they now said that but till now, when they covered Moses with a veil because they couldn't look at the glory, till now that veil is over the mind when the law and the word is what? Is read. Right? But when the heart will turn to the Lord, that veil will and the Lord is. So what are they saying? Say, get back into spirit life. The veils will be removed and you will behold what? The glory. They will basically describing how to walk in the glory of the New Testament by spirit life. Some people don't even know how to explain this grammar that I'm talking to you. They just live the life and the glory is all around. The glory is more than you can describe. And that's the treasure that is in the New Testament. There's so many things to explore. And they said, when the heart will turn to that same Holy Ghost that you live spirit life, that veil that blocked their face over Moses' face from seeing the glory is now taken away. And then you behold the glory of the Lord and then you start to become it. You start to become it. And you're going from glory to glory to glory until you get to Jesus' image. What level of glory is that? <laughs> For eternity, you will still be traveling. But you see, that lets you know there's so much journey, so much exploring, so much discovery, meaning so much riches of glory in this new testament if you walk in spirit life. So it's, it's in the process of walking spirit life that you now discover one realm of glory. Maybe angels, activity, treasures in the spirit. You go around on territory, you know, heavenlies. You discover things, portions of heaven. So you'll be going from glory to glory. That's how they describe it and that's what happens. So how much glory are we discovering? Amen. And so, I, I love it. I'm, I'm so wonderfully blessed today that people, we can rehearse these core definitions of spirit life and begin to get into it and start to discover that actually there's boundless, unlimitless things in God still to be received by the believer, still to be di discovered. People always brag and boast, we have this, I am greater than good, bro, but walk, when you walk in spirit life, you see things play out. You see things demonstrated, manifested, like you have never seen before. And it's not just when you are preaching. It's not just when you are a preacher. When you live, when you are living, living it will be different kinds of things will be happening, unusual, all the time, you know. And it is those people who live like that, that are the New Testament minister. 
that escape the veils. So you can be a minister and be under veils. You can pray from under veils. You can Bible study and Bible teach from under veil. Because it's Moses. Moses is in the Bible. It's the law. But from under veil that puts a veil over mind. You, you, can, you, 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 can, you can have gifts and be under veil. Amen. But we don't want to emphasize that. We just said, look, just grow in the spirit life. You'll be seeing layers of veils just going and you'll be make, meaning you'll be discovering things all the time. And you don't have to be conjuring, cooking up this revelation. I saw one revelation scripture that is not there. You don't have to. It will be flowing naturally. Simple witness. Hallelujah. So deep, deep revelation is when from basic spirit life, you can speak advanced things to basic things. How many of you, after you got filled with the Holy Spirit or you got born again, you discover you... The person in spirit life will be learning all the time because he's not him talking. Each time he's healed and he opens his mouth, he'll be hearing things, sometimes not from his own level of light, from the, but from the very light of heaven at the highest level. That's what we talk. And you will say things sometimes like, I don't know that. I'm not sure. And then the scripture will now open after I realize, wow, the more I open my mouth under his influence, the more I'm learning. I, I like what he said. He said... You've been speaking in tongues all these years. What if you interpret? Do you know you are you right now say a lot of things? You already say a lot of things that are beyond your level. What if the veil parts and there is unveiling? You can now interpret what you are saying. What would it be? So the 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 life in the spirit, ministry in the spirit is so key because we need plenty of unveiling. New, therefore, New Testament ministries, ministry of unveiling. He says, till now, when Moses is read, the veil remains over there. When the Bible from Old Testament is read. But when the heart will turn, so it, it's a heart, your heart has to be truly. Like he said, a lot of people's souls mix with their hearts and it's twisted. Your heart and soul has to be in, fully in it in truth. When the heart will turn to the Lord, to the Lord means you are submitted to God in turning to Him. The veil will be what? Taken away and will behold the glory. He's still talking about the New Testament glory. So the New Testament glory involves taking away, it is a ministry of unveiling. So when there's real spirit life ministry, people won't just hear what you said. They will start to see with their hearts and with their spirits because there is unveiling. Amen. You will start by communicating spirit and life and they'll be hearing after some time, the veil will part and they will start to see into what you are saying and now start to get, start to get, start to get. At that point, you started shifting and being able to coordinate and minister the true spirit life. That's what happens. And that's why we are, we are doing School of the Spirit, Spirit Life Prophetic School in various places. School of the Spirit, SOTS centers in various places because we know that's the key. Amen. The more people attend School of the Spirit, we, before we put collar on their neck, they've turned to something else. They carry power and glory. They don't even understand. Some people carry small and go and run away because they don't, they don't know. They don't know the unveiling that brought the glory is still going on. Amen. But even the people who are not, who are not saying we are ministry, we are ministry, they are moving in signs and wonders. They are moving in unusual things. So long as that, the grace of God is super normal over them. And they didn't say I'm pastor. I'm a, and that's why I used to say our people, don't be carrying titles around. You don't need to carry titles. Just carry function. And you will have more titles than you can count. Amen. 
People will be giving you title after title after title because they will see your function. Amen. We see babes and sucklings function just by attending the gopa, they function because spirit life releases that glory of the New Testament. People are operating in different kinds of things. They are, they've gone prophetic. Some, some are not apostles, but they've frankly gone apostolic. Amen. The more we do this, the more we see dramatic things. You should hear me sharing testimony yesterday about the wind that blew rain into Makoti for the year. I mean, like, how about that? You should have more unusual things. That's what God wants. Somebody who is a missionary in South Africa that I met at GBR in South Africa, they have a mission field in Madagascar. Right? In Madagascar, a mission field. And they've been having mission, but they now had a new intake of missionaries. Then they used Spirit Life ebook to train them. He, he started following when we connected, started following you know, they now got, he saw, you have this book, he read it, he was so blessed. He now said, the mission field needs this. So they used the mission, the, 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 the e-book to train this new set of young missionaries. And they now released them to the field. Around that period, there was now an epidemic that swept the area. And the area was an Islamic area. Amen. To their shock, these young missionaries went there and swept the place. They were not just preaching or handing out tracts. They were getting people healed, getting people delivered on the mission field. An old man now died from the epidemic. They brought them into the house. It was a Muslim area. And they raised the man back to life. And the mission field <laughs> blew open. Amen. I mean, like, awesome testimonies. Five young missionaries. So this is the mission field that they just, you, the, who is your God? Me, I don't believe in Christianity. They don't even start like that. They just engage them from the spirit. In Zaria too, these guys, they go on evangelism in the real enclosure. <laughs> you guys don't know the adventures that go on in Zaria. Amen. Real Holy Ghost. Some of the things you read on the news, you watch and they're these are the guys. <laughs> these are the people that did it. Is them I or miracle? But you won't, you don't know now. They are not television figures, but they are spirit rulers. Amen. Dramatic things that you see. God moving in place where Christ is not supposed to be named. You now see the signs and wonders of God. The original Christianity that took over Europe was not the was not the religious Christianity. It was not the steeples and stained glass not the crucifix and cathedral, not the pulpit and pew, the, this thing. It was the spirit life people. It was the St. Patrick's, St. Columba of Iona that were moving in spirit life and training people in spirit life. That's how Europe got saved. So now you now say the, the other Arab world, they won't take the gospel. Even Europe is not taking this gospel. That's not how it began. But when really you introduce spirit life, I've seen mission fields shift. Villages that they don't accept change. Same thing in Ghana. After the prophetic meeting, apostolic impartation, there's a region they don't really get. You heard that brother in December giving testimony from Ghana. The power of God swept the area. They started a church in that area. There's no way to, to be apost apostle means a saint one. To be apostolic means to live under the sending. If you are led of the spirit, you are sent. There's no way you will live spirit life that you won't stumble on apostolic somehow. Amen. But you can call yourself apostle this, apostle that, apostle, apostle, 24-7 all the time, and you are not functionally apostolic. That's not what we need. Hallelujah. And so, you know, we, we realize the powerful key that we are not <laughs> making noise about that changes territories, it shifts places, it revives churches, it shifts the gospel advancing places. That's why we have Spirit Life, School of the Spirit centers in various places. Because we know that, yes, maybe we are not 10,000, 5,000, but we see the impact the people who gather, the impact they make. Hallelujah. In various, even in various nations. Amen. They, they called me from 
South Africa one time, we sent a mail and said that they were getting our audios from here and they were they were playing them. This brother was playing them and he was leader of the fellowship of the fellowship in the South African University, I think in Pretoria. He was leader of the fellowship. And then he began to experience changes. Then he asked God for deliverance and played one of the audios and he saw an encounter where the power of God was coming as he was hearing the audio, angels came darkness broke out of him, he was under the power and he laid down there and then got freed then he went for fellowship the next, you know, fellowship and discovered that as he's ministering, deliverance breaks out and he's not ministering deliverance deliverance just breaks out and people are lying down under the power for hours the fellowship closes, people are still lying down and he's not trying to do it and he, he's seen that from that encounter from the audio is still going on. Then other campuses, other people, other guys in other campuses, their head has started coming. And started getting hit and impacted. Falling out on the and then they're taking it back to their campus. You know, it's only his story I heard. Amen. Of how deliverance, baptism broke out. The ones who came and tapped and went to other places, we don't even know how fight has gone. <laughs> say amen somebody the potentials are unlimited unlimited somebody say unlimited you apply yourself to really come under that spirit life dealing with, you, you'll be seeing various kinds of things ministers, churches one church wrote in from Kenya they listened to the audios. They had their church broke from denominational spirit, broke from controlling religious spirit, and went into a spirit life church. They got a new download, saw their scroll, listening to the audio and reading the materials, and then went to change their name, went into a move of God, and are carrying on revival. And I've not gone there once. Actually, the weak spirit life was released, but a while after that, I had a vision in which I saw myself running towards a gate. And as I was running, and I saw myself multiplying. And I was multiplying, and plenty of, <laughs> plenty of me ran through that gate, and we're now running in different directions. I was now wondering, what's that? There's this cartoon we used to watch those days, they called Globetrotters, that there's this guy that used to multiply. They called him Multi-Man Multiply. If you just see him multiply, there'll be 10 of him, 50 of him multiplying. That's his own superhero power. So I was now remembering that cartoon that is it's multi-man. Then I realized it's the e-book. And the reason he said, make the e-book available, make it free. Amen. So it's be like Babs is not, it's not Babs has his own. It's the realm of the spirit that we're just trying to walk. When people get that realm to them, they walk the same thing. I discovered we say the same thing with servants of God who have lived 100 years ago, 500 years ago, some of them are still alive. It's called, we say the same thing word for word. Having never met, how is that possible? It's because we, are, we, we journeyed past the same place. First time I read Rick Joyner's final quest. People, people told me like, it's one of the things we said word for word. They quoted there. And you are wondering, how come? It's because you journeyed in the spirit past the same place. So unity is in the spirit. It may not be in all the things that you're trying. If there's a lot of gathering and there's no spirit or orchestration, there may not be. The Bible says endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Hallelujah. So this is, this is wonderful. If you are in various places, Zaria, Mina, where have you were, shaping in Abuja, it's not, you know it's not going to be usual church. School of the Spirit, you see dramatic things playing out. You guys get together. Go for the meetings. Start getting equipped. Some the places where there's no regular meetings, there is at least once in a while meetings. You see what God is, is able to do. Even ministers, ministries who join pretty soon, they are talking about their ministry has changed. Hallelujah. I think we may be, you know, a little more engaging in Medugu soon. Amen. 
But even if we have, we, we have not really gone, they have gone, I've gone to Yola, I didn't get to meet the president. But the Zoom meeting that happened, I mean, we started the meeting on Zoom, and we started chanting and releasing prophecy. People who were outside the hall got hit by the power of God. And then they started, I looked at the hall initially from the screen, and like it was scanty. Then I looked again, and the hall was full. So I asked him, well, what happened in this place? Ah, they were all outside fire. We don't even know how they heard, and they all ran in. And after that, operations manifest. Maybe we'll hear medieval testimony later, but I mean, like that was campus meeting, and it was a Zoom meeting, and the Holy Ghost still broke, and people are still breaking into things. Only God knows how many people were activated. Some of them still functional, I guess. Praise God. That's the potential. That's what it can do in your own individual life is New Testament. It will achieve New Testament because that's what God designed. Look, look at, let's look at these testimonies. If, do you have the display? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome, awesome word. Awesome message. Powerful. Look at this. Thank you so much, sir. I'm a living witness to the Spirit Life book and the New Wine Life stream has changed my life. My father was reminding me last summer that my coming to just in February 2017 was the actual point of a significant change in my life. I had read the Spirit Life book that January. I have not remained the same afterward. Please, many of us cannot imagine what our lives would have been and how boring uh, uh, and how boring and maybe even frustrating our Christian journey may have been without our encounter with the new life and the spirit life ebook. Thank you, dear sir. Hallelujah. I mean, like, these are, these are even few. There's, a, there's another one. Maybe, maybe we should put the book online from next week, right? So that people can get to download it. One pastor told me, you wrote it, book. I'm like, yeah, I wrote it. I wrote it since. Then. So you made it available. I'm like, whatever. Because I don't go around announcing my book. <laughs> Amen. I don't go around saying, oh, I wrote this book, buy my book. And the Holy Spirit said then, just make it ebook and make it free. That way I don't have to print, spend money and recoup my money back. So completely free. I don't make noise, but God knows what he's doing with it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So uh, let's, let's just pray and round up Kerobosha this session and make a commitment can you make a commitment as they've prayed with you as they've prayed for you say lord i want to walk in your spirit life i commit to walk in your spirit life i submit to your walk in the spirit i submit my will to obey your word and your spirit, Lord. I submit my will to you. Holy Spirit, I come into a relationship with you. I promise to obey. I promise to follow. Be my teacher. I want to be your child. Your, your servant, your obedient one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the sun. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Lift your hands. Give a shout to the Lord. All right. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Ayo Miracle and the other brethren. What a wonderful, powerful word. We need to continue engaging at these levels. I, 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 I said we were going to show a video yesterday, right? I, I wanted to let you know that when you have programs, we often weigh those programs by the quality of people who are speaking. That's investors, and that's good. But I want to, in that vein, kind of like say, like, the, the weight of a meeting comes 
with the extent to which God speaks and the extent to which his voice was heard. Amen. Because this testimony that I was talking about last night was not a large meeting in Ghana. But it has ended up shifting the landscape to some extent of the church in Ghana by raising somebody, and not just him, a series of people were rising from that meeting who are now rising in Ghana. This brother was brought from being a technician and just brought into major major contact with fathers there, major platforms and stuff. And I still remember the prophecy. I just looked at him and those we started speaking. I started bringing up words, picture, fasting, prayer, God lifting him, fathers, calling him, sending for him, prophetic unction coming on his life. And after that meeting, not long after that, they called him. They had just finished the fasting. They called him that they were having a national conference. And the father in the, uh, the great major leader in said, it usually is the regional leaders that speak. But they now call a technician that is arranging wires and cables. The same way some of you are doing right now. Amen. And they call him that he will speak. <laughs> Why? Why would that happen? But that was the word of the Lord playing out. And he went there to speak and the whole thing just turned prophetic. And turned very precisely prophetic. And just went like that. And that's how God began connecting him at that level all over their country and all over their groups and he kept meeting fathers until you know, ended up I didn't even know about the part of him being taken out, he went out and then went again to South Africa and um, South Korea, I think he met them Young Cho, I think that may have been before Young Cho passed on, I don't know when, when Young Cho passed to Blue Ring eh? 21 21. So as he like, he went to their church in South Korea, ministry, and then the next thing, the doors opened there too. And now that his back is connecting more fathers, I mean like, within four years, right? Four, five years, all of this has happened. Within four years, three, four years, all of these things just happened like that magnificently. So I, I want you to look at this testimony, because I couldn't even recognize him again when he was in the meeting we went for in Accra this March, right? But I don't know kept prompting me, this guy, this guy, you need to call. I'm like, who is this guy? You need to call him for her. I'm like, are you that brother that was receiving that prophecy? Then before he now said, yes, it's me. I'm like, hmm, very interesting. And then called him up to, to share. I, I, I'm sharing this to let you know that one thing God can say to you, one, one word from God, you never underestimate meetings where God is talking. That's the power of the prophetic apostolic. The impact of the meeting doesn't end at the meeting. The impact even most, mostly begins after the meeting. Because that's when the word of the Lord now starts to play out in dramatic ways in people's lives. So I want you to be hungry as we are gathered, be so sincerely hungry in the spirit that you are drawing words from the Holy Ghost. Now, any servant of God or, or anybody who happens to be by, just passed by by mistake, you will be like a vacuum, a world when you'll be pulling by sincere hunger, the sincere river and the sincere word of the Lord over yourself. Hallelujah. All right, so let's watch this. I think it's five minutes, right? Uh -huh, and then we'll continue. Glory to God. Servant of God, were, were, were we together the other time when we came in, in the hall there? Oh, wow. The, the person with the tech prophecy from the technical, you know, I didn't even remember. It's just coming back. And the Lord has really shifted you. That's true. 
major shift. Yes, please. So what's going on now? By the grace of God, now he's making me influence over his body through ministration and signs and wonders through my meetings by the grace of God. And this was just between that time we were together and now, and then you were a technician. But the word of the Lord turned you into a voice, yes, yes. a prophetic voice in the body. As part of, as part of turning me into that voice, he also made a way for me to go and study in Uedo under the late Dr. Yongi Cho in South Korea. 100% scholarship, my flight, my accommodation, monthly start and everything. Then, there also he said that what he started through the prophecies he released is making me a boy. So he sent me there to study. And when I came back to my second meeting, I was with him. God confirmed what I went to study. I saw some being manifest, which is in the healing ministry as well from the late Dr. Yomi Cho. So it's, it's, it's in the right direction. Wow. <laughs> when was this trip? I came back in December, we are in March, so I came back on the 11th December. Wow, so, so you, you went, when did you go? 2022, August 2022. So you went in August and stayed for just over a year? One and a half years. One and a half years. In the word of the Lord. I've been looking at you, I have now, but the Holy Spirit kept pulling me to you, to call you to bear witness of what the word of the Lord has done. And now, you see, his witness is your prophecy. Because three, three and a half years ago, when we, were, when we met here in Accra, he was in the tech. He had no plans for all of this. But the Spirit of God was visiting him. And he sent his prophecy to speak to it and to confirm it. And now, God has made him someone else entirely. And the Spirit of the Lord says He's making you a father. That's why He calls you to meet the fathers. Korobosha, because part of the prophecy then was that great fathers will send for you in high places, that it will be going on up and down like that. I had no idea you went to Yonggi Cho's place in South Korea. But I'm standing, I didn't even know it was you. I see you one way on camera. I remember you then, but I didn't know it was you. But the Spirit of the Lord kept calling me to come and call you out. And I'm wondering if it's you. And lo and behold, here we are. And then he said, we meet the fathers. He spoke about the prophetic. He spoke about your period of waiting on the Lord. And look at now, you meet the great, some of the greatest fathers of all times, the one from the East. Because he says, I'm making you a father. And that's why he's connecting you and he's stretching your hand and your influence across base so that you can help the prophetic generation that is coming up. And you are looking at around here and beyond. You can help raise them and help position them. And that's why he's giving you the influence that he's giving you. So right now, I want everybody to look this way and I want this servant of the Lord to pray. No, you are going to pray before I pray for you. <laughs> because your, 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 it was prophecy, now it's testimony. And now it will become prophecy for them. Because the testimony or the witness of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the witness that you will bear now and speak over them will also become their prophecy in Christ Jesus. How many of you are ready? All right, come and stand. Korobosha. Let him pray because God has raised him up. He has become a leader and the Lord has granted him influence far and near simply by his mighty hand and word. And he can speak through him to you too.
Okay, so this is the first half, the second clip. Some of his witnesses in the second clip. So we we'll play some of that, and then we continue. In the house of the, the king. The pastor just saw me and he said, young man, we don't know you. But something is telling me that you are a pastor. I lie not. I told them I'm not a pastor. He said, no. You pray over this food and let's eat. By the time I finish praying over the food, he said, from now till you leave Korea, every all night, we are giving you the microphone to come and minister. Yes. It is the Lord that amplifies your voice. Oh, man of God, what made the case worse, Daddy? What made the case worse? The first one night they gave me, Daddy, I was ministering. Then I was just declaring healing. I was declaring, declaring. Then when we finished the meeting, two ladies ran to the pastor. Man of God, I am healed. I am healed. My neck, I couldn't stretch my neck for years. But as the young man was leading, I, I said, Jesus, how do we run from the thing you are running on? Then the Lord said, I will confirm my word. Can I declare over the life of somebody? We have three more declarations. That the Lord will make your voice a hear him voice. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him until that voice comes from on high. Nobody will listen to you. I declare in the name of Jesus, everywhere they try to mute. Uh, um, all right. Do, do we hear that prayer point so that we can give a shout of amen. All right, let's hear that prayer point. <laughs> so today we sound your voice uh, like a trumpet declare, I activate my voice into the corridors. Power! Declare, I activate my voice into the corridors of power. All right, let's give a shout to the Lord. Come on, I can't hear your voice. Give a shout to the Lord. So that was Ghana in, in, in March. Of course, you can hear the way they are speaking their own English. Their own English is very polished. I mean, like, it's very well intoned. Here, we speak English. We don't have the intonation. We speak English, but we have Yoruba intonation. Hallelujah. I mean, like, you know, evidently, that was them. Look, look at what happened from, from nowhere, from nothing. One word, one prophecy triggered a whole journey, triggered a series of things until a national influence and international open doors. I mean, like, Korea, full scholarship, fully paid, air tickets, accommodation, he now gets there and he's sitting down and somebody said, I perceive you are a pastor. He said, no, I'm not a pastor. He said, no, come and lead prayer. And he starts like that. And the second time he's leading prayer, healings break out. Until he left Korea, he was announced a minister with open doors. Even when, who, who wants that? Maybe not in, in preaching. Maybe you are not a preacher. But in your spare, who wants that? I think we can ask God for that open door. You see, when we are, when are gathered in this meeting, the impact of the meetings never end here. The ripple effect can be going on for years. I mean, look at that level of, of, of 
you know, exposure, release, and then he comes back to Ghana, West Africa, and the level of influence, of course, goes to another level. And that's what I'm talking about. That's what the word I was sensing last night. So if, you, if we want this, I think we should pray about it. Because the Bible says, ask ye of the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. So there, there are times where God wants to do something and he asks you to go through the protocol of asking. Amen. Sometimes they want to give you admission in school, university, or they want to give you a, a, an office position. They just say, it's already, but we want you to sign. So you can ask, and like, why should I sign? You already decided to give me, so just give me. No, it's the protocol, it's the procedure. Ask and you receive. For the Father already knows what you have need of before you ask. But why should I ask? That is the procedure of heaven. Let's stand to our feet. You want something. You want this kind of projection, this kind of promotion, this kind of release over your life, your calling, your ministry, your purpose. I want just to ask right now. Go ahead. Yes. Dokamaka, can you play this? Thank you, Jesus. There's an open portal in this place. From yesterday, I began to hear that over New Wine School of the Spirit, every gathering, every apostolic summit, that the international gates are unlocked. You know, we used to look forward to August New Wine. We talk of August, International New Wine. 
Yesterday, I heard the Spirit of God say that each time, each time, each time there's a gathering, each time there's a gathering, the gates of the international uh, are unlocked over people in the name of Jesus. Uh, as Apostle was ministering yesterday, he kept talking about Kenneth Hagin, he kept talking about international. That word international, I kept recording and recording and recording. And I asked the Spirit of God, I said, I thought the international dimension was for Augusta. And he said, no, there's an upgrade. I hear there's an upgrade for somebody in the name of Jesus. I hear there's an upgrade of platforms for somebody in the name of Jesus. There's an upgrade of opportunities for somebody in the name of Jesus. For there's expansion of territory. There's enlargement of territory. There's enlargement of territory. Now your voice. Now your voice. Now your voice exceeds the limit. Now your voice breaks out from the local to the national to the international. The gates of the international are open over you in the name of Jesus. The gates of the international are open over you in the name of Jesus. And we enter this covenant with the Lord uh, that when there is a summoning uh, in new wine uh, school of the spirit uh, it is the season uh, for the international uh, it is the season uh, for the international uh, so we call forth uh, we say international gates uh, open in the name of Jesus uh, international gates uh, open in the name of Jesus international influence uh, open in the name of Jesus uh, you had met local fathers before you had met local fathers before. The Spirit of the Lord says, uh, He's bringing you uh, into pathways uh, with international fathers, uh, with fathers of territories, uh, with fathers of nations. Uh, in every sphere, uh, whatever sphere you belong to, uh, the international gates uh, are open uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, give a shout to the Lord. even when we don't plan for that but he said every new one is now international and I'm looking I was wondering why did you come in April why not wait for the international one in August now I understand why every new wine gathering is going to carry an international dimension over it and that's why she is here it's the same thing that brother said full scholarship full flight accommodation and now let me stop there Should, I think I need to stop there because of what's happening and that's the other thing I needed to point out that it's not just for those in ministry it's not just for those not just for those carrying microphone in whatever sphere you are in when you start partnering it's new international so to me it's not tied to it's not just for flyers. I like to fly, I will look nice. You know, 
It's a dimension. And it's God that put, I didn't create it. God put that dimension there. We've seen person after person after person go international. And the strange thing is that the ones who didn't go there, the international realm came here and met them. Reverend Sam, is that correct? <laughs> Amen. You see, Reverend Sam, Apostle Giles was here last night. He'll be here later, you know, in the evening. Even Pastor Gabe, he has already traveled. But as he came back, that realm is following him. So I want you to know I, I, that it's not just for those preaching. That whatever sphere you are in, if your spirit contacts that realm, you, you partner with new wine from spirit and truth, you will see that realm open. We are seeing people getting international jobs, deals, contracts, employment all the time now. In the February, is it the, the week, is it the December New Year or the February prophetic school? Two or so people turned up within that same week. Who some of one of them was Moses Abba from Zaria. How God made him stay extra seven years in Zaria, being faithful. They were doing new wine, new wine. Zaria. When God, with all his intelligence, all God made him wait and say, When this will happen, it's international doors. Going, the US, he was hungry to go now. It's like, Hallelujah. Somebody says, When I'm in Abuja, that God, no, this one was in Zaria. Not the good part of Zaria, where the roads are tall. Where, where the roads are, this one is muddy road and everything, and that didn't stop God. If the gravestone of Lazarus could not stop Jesus, then there is no hindrance in your life that can stop him. If you are hearing me, give a shout to the Lord. And so we are, we are, we are, we are just saying, I, I wonder, but these people should have come in August to testify, but they came in February. They are coming again now because something is going on. The that realm God spoke about is actually playing out. And I feel right now that there are people who are in spheres, right? Who are serving God in business spheres, maybe in education spheres, in corporate spheres. You are not really a preacher, but you know you want to tune in to partnering with new one because these apostolic, like we said about Nexus, the Nexus site is a convergence point where various streams are activated from. Amen. They converge, they converge, then they are triggered, they are spread, they are, they are released like fountains. And that's what Nexus is going to be about. And those streams are already operational here. But I feel like right now, I want to pray with people who you know you are in various spheres. And you know it's time for a shift. I even feel like you even want that international dimension over you in your own sphere, I would like you to come to the front. Pastor Gabe, come, come, come forward. We're going to pray. Pastor Ayo, come forward. We're going to pray. Reverend Sam, come forward. We're going to pray. Your business is going to go dimensional. It's going to go international. One of our sisters, after, was it the December meeting or February meeting, called me. The first call from U.S. to do, this person was like, is it a tailor or something? Is a tailor, the call from U.S. to do training on tailoring headdress and how to make some is it foods now? The thing is so local that I can't even remember. If it's one international thing, then I'll be speaking the grammar. But it was so local. It amazed me. I was very amazed. Because that means that dimension is actually open. Amen. You can do as businessmen, but you can become a kingdom agent. Where God's mantle is on your life to enter various spheres, various nations, but you'll be carrying God's witness, God's glory, God's power. But I see God wants to take people's business and make it a kingdom business. And by that ordination, carry them into various places. It's going to happen. Can you play that some deeper? Can 
Shaka, Ubaraba Shaka, Lediba, Relias, Ubaraba Shaka, Shaka Lediba, Makaba Soto Kibaraba Shaka. Godwin, come forward. Godwin, let's, let's do this. Yeah, you have measures of that. Korogosha, mercy. Where's the mercy? Come and pray. Korogosha, kaha. Prophesy into their spheres. Activate their spheres. Korogosha. Find someone to draw. Come and join him. Kebarabasha, kaha. It's unlocking right now. Come on, come on. Kebaraba shaka ha. Kebaraba shaka ha. Keborobo soto le de bakabasha. Prophesy into their spheres. Prophesy into their business. Kebaraba shaka ha. Yeah. Korobo shaka. Good. The keyboard is good. Just leave the keyboard. Kebaraba shaka ha. Le de bakabasha. I saw the whirlwind of God. The portal of God opening, the whirlwind of Elijah unlocking. There will be supernatural open doors, supernatural portals. apostolic ministry is entering your business realm is entering your corporate realm is entering your career realm this is the launching fault of your business your corporate your sphere by prophetic apostolic implication you are going to see manifesting a play
just miracles just taking place God just releasing miracles for people if you are seated in that place you can use your faith your spirit contact to pull things down use your spirit connection to pull things down use your spirit order to pull things down 
Everybody's going to be activated to function as a new wine nexus. Every sphere is going to have an expression. That's why we are building. That's why we are building the center. That's why we are building the nexus convergence. agents in their own appointed realm. You know, no matter which area you are functional or you are working at your vocation or your purpose, the spirit life can make you a minister in that realm.
spirit life, whatever sphere you are in, can be a spiritual ministry and a spiritual place of operation for God, even as material and as physical or corporate or secular as it may ever be. Amen. Because you see, God's drive is to build that ecosystem. Is to build Nexus into the ecosystem where every sphere will be an expression of the Spirit of God. The marketplace will be an expression. There was an altar in the marketplace in Acts 17. And that was the altar to the unknown God that Paul was activating and now went to talk. From the market, they took him to Areopagos, Mass Hill. And so, going into all the world will not just be crusade alone. It will be great crusade and conferences, but to be in various spheres. And God wants his people to be tuned up, to be built up, to be able to function in every sphere. You might not know, but the first AI, artificial intelligence and robotics seminar that I held in Plateau State was held by New Wine Prophetic School, PSKA. Even the second one, I mean like Unijos that is known around the world. Unijos is known globally. We're not the first. It was prophetic school. And the government sent people. Unijos sent people. We had various people present. The second one even was, a, was still a partnership with prophetic school, new wine, and some, I, you know, 
IT hubs, all these hubs in town, we, 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 we are going to have a hub as well. We are converging. We, we have to because that's where the world is going. I had to attend an AI course. AI course for prophetic people, you know, because I'm getting aware of what's going on. I, I did it online when my pastor told me and all of those people were, were there facilitating. And I realized people are really going, it has gone further than what people realize. And so we're, we're going to be a hub. God has to enter everywhere. There's, you know, it has to be in food, food, land, agriculture, housing. We have to do it, but from that stream of the spirit, that grace of God in a way that will it will minister, it will minister the life of God. Food is a big issue now, in case you haven't noticed. Amen. And it's a scientific issue. There's a lot of scientific plans around it. Some of it you may not like the way it is being arranged. Hallelujah. But God is already speaking to his people to buy land, get land, start creating farms, start building houses, start creating systems of the spirit of God and we find that God we find God is betting that too around here so the next is going to be that converging point for that spiritual ecosystem powered by the river of the spirit of God hallelujah so that, that, that the place will express every sphere one way or the other but through God's grace and through God's people so you have to start building up you have to start shaping yourself up, you know, because you, your sphere has to have somebody who is of God, who is godly and can represent with nobility and integrity. We even have this scheme out right now, this, this um, form online that we ask new wine people to feel, feel how you've been participating, your name, the place you've been coming from, how you've been connecting, you know, your reference or re somebody you can refer to, and the area of your expression, the area of your creativity, you know. And we, we, we have partners, people who are beginning to call, like we want your, your, your people to feel, we want to know which area they are creative, we want to see if there can be sponsorship for them. Amen. So that right now, it's not just sponsorship for preaching, you know, but for spheres that is being offered. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. God is going to do it one way somehow. As he's, we've seen some surprises already of what God, how, has done. So, the structure is coming into place, coming into focus, the spheres, the ecosystem, the nexus. Hallelujah. So I think by 3 p.m., we just go there briefly, those of us who have vehicles, we make a decree and we come back, right? But right now, let's stare the structures of the spirit and the nexus as a realm open. <laughs> I know you think it's just a building, but it's not just a building, it's a realm. It's a dimension that God is expressing into the earth. And that's why only Him is doing it. And only He knows how He's done it and He's doing it. Even till now. Lift your hands and say, I stare the realm. <laughs> I steer the dimension of the nexus. The same way I steer the international dimension. I steer the realm of the nexus. I call it forth. I activate it. I release it. Even now. In Jesus' mighty name. That's your realm. You are in the structure. You are in the spheres. And God is activating you right now. In Jesus' mighty name. As you are watching me and hearing me online, God is activating you too. 
right now in Jesus mighty name now give a shout to the Lord give a shout to the Lord give a shout to the Lord hallelujah glory be to God right let's put our hands together for the Lord okay so let's take time out now by 3 p.m., those of us who have cars, you can help. We we'll assemble at the park. We we'll take the short ride, three, four minutes ride to the next side. We pray, declare, then we come back. And um, from 4:30 p.m., the evening session will commence. God bless you.